Okay, well, um, I guess I'll quickly go through kind of how I uh, go through an image in Capture One. Um, I'm on version 6.2, um, it's the most up to date version. Um, so basically, normally I actually have this set up as I showed earlier in the um, in my post. Uh, I have it set up as a dual screen um, workspace, which makes things a lot easier for me. Um, but since I can't record a dual screen workspace on um, screencast o um, I'm going to show you kind of how I do it in a single screen workspace. Um, so one of the basic things, um, I always I always make sure I'm using the uh, I'm in the right tool. Um, if you're not in the select tool, you can end up doing some weird things and not knowing why. Um, the quick way to get back to that is just hitting V. Um, so I'm in the select tool, uh, and I've got as, as I showed before, I have my quick tab set to pretty much do every single thing um, I could want. Um, this is an image I took. It's uh, not a bad image straight out of the camera. Um, I actually haven't done uh, anything to this. This is um, pretty much, you know, this is straight out of camera. So um, one of the first things I'll do, sometimes I will, I shoot with a D700, the curve here and base characteristics, it's usually pretty damn good just from the film standard V2. Um, if I feel like I'm going to be kind of pump, pumping up contrast or I want to have more control over the image and the contrast, I might drop it to the portrait um, base characteristic, the curve. Gives you a little flatter image, but it gives you more to play with. Um, gives a little more range to adjust from, so you can kind of like, you don't have to take what it gives you. Um, but for this one, I'm going to start with film standard version two because that's uh, it's it's the reason I love this program. It tends to give me great um, images straight out of camera. Um, so, you know, first thing, a uh, great place to usually start is with your white balance. Um, as I'm sure you know, whether you've, you you've done any um, use camera raw or Lightroom, um, or any other version, but. This image, the the white balance is pretty good. You can it Lightroom or Capture One actually has a lot more um, presets for white balance than say Lightroom does. Um, I this one came out pretty well. Let's see what's yeah as as shot is actually I probably had it in a uh, maybe a shade because I think I was uh, yeah this was shooting shaded. I just had a reflector with a little bit of light coming onto my. Uh, subject here. Um, so there's two ways to access if you want to use the white balance picker. Um, I don't really have a good white point that I'd like to use for this. Um, if you do want it, you can simply hit the W key or click on the button. It's going to bring you over and bring up your eyedropper. Let's see what happens if I click on this white. Yeah, so that's going to make it way more um, way more orange than I'd like. So I'm going to undo that. Just bring it back. Um, again, I'm going to hit my V key, just go back to select so that I don't randomly collect, click something. Um, but obviously you can play around with your white balance. Pretty good place to start. I'm going to warm this up just a tad because I feel like the shade was uh, making it a little cold. Um, that's a little bit much. And you know, I don't know how well calibrated your monitor is going to look compared to mine, but um, the color is pretty good here. I like the skin tone. It looks good. Um, so next thing I'm gonna I would normally be working on is gonna be my exposure. Uh, this is a pretty well exposed image. Um, my histogram looks pretty good to me. Um, I might bump up the brightness. So brightness affects midtones, midtone brightness. Um, that's gonna be if you look at a curve here, right around this area. Um, nice way to kind of just bump up some of those mid-tones, give you a little bit of that pop as you can kind of see. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll add a little brightness and then I uh, add a little contrast to um, bring things back. So that's a nice little way to kind of give it a little pop. Um, the high dynamic range, this is shadow and highlight recovery. Um, this is where Capture One shines over Lightroom in a uh, massive amounts. Um, just the ability to 
capture recapture highlights that you never recover highlight details that you didn't think possible or bring out some shadows um, if we just if I just open up some shadow detail I'm getting shadow detail in here that's I didn't you know definitely didn't see in there so it, it's a pretty powerful tool um, definitely great when you need it um, this image doesn't particularly need anything. I don't really have any blown highlights that I don't that I don't you know that I care about to bring back. So it's pretty good. Um, I like to add a bit of clarity to pretty much every image I I use. Clarity is mid tone contrast. Um, it kind of gives that film look that that you know you're missing in a lot of digital images. So you can kind of see uh, as I bump this up. So that's full clarity. Definitely a you know intense pop. Um, for this image, obviously that's way more than I want, but I'm definitely I like it. You know, there's kind of a cool feel to this with a little bit extra added clarity. So I'm going pretty high, like 25. Um, so again, like zero, back up to 25. Should it's it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. It can make a big difference. Um, so. Another nice thing is you got the full curves tool, which of course can be something you can completely destroy an image with, or uh, you know, play around with and get a little bit of. Sometimes um, this is another way I might bump a little, bump the midtones a little bit. Um, you know, add a couple points, add a little bit of contrast. Um, you got to be real careful because real quick it blocks things up. Um, so the curve tool is you know. Pretty advanced. You don't really don't always need to play around with the curve tool too much. The sharpening for me um, is always pretty pretty darn good. Just uh, the basic settings it applies. Um, I'm pretty sure it actually just applies an automatic setting um, for each image. But there are some presets in here um, that you can play around with, and it actually one of the nice things is it'll preview different presets as you roll over them. So if you have a really soft image, there's some different different presets here. I pretty much leave it. Sometimes I bump up my radius a little bit. It really depends on the subject. Um, that's kind of up to you. I also like to have the vignetting tool um, down on my in my uh, quick panel here, so I can pretty much get that on. It's a nice, it's a very um, dark room esque vignette, uh, which is cool. A couple different options. You can do an elliptic on the elliptic or a circular or uh, circular on the crop, depending on what you like to do. Um, so that's kind of a basic rundown. So what I wanted to kind of move into would be some of the more advanced tools. Um, one thing, so I wanted to go into the color editor. So in the color editor, so let me bring that up. You've got your basic color tab and you've got your advanced color tab and you've also got your skin tones. The basic color tab is really, it's kind of like the hue contrast uh, luminance sliders and Lightroom or ACR. Um, these kind of are just, they're kind of like big adjustments. Um, you know, the basic colors, and you're going to affect the whole range of color. Um, not very precise, uh, you know, good if you're doing a landscape um, where you don't have to worry about people's skin tones. Um, not as good if you are worried, concerned about something like that. The beauty of Capture One is in the going to be in the advanced um, color editor. So what I like to do this little thing right here. This is going to be your pick color, your color picker. You click on that, brings up a little eyedropper. I in this image, um, I definitely want to pop these blues here. So I'm going to click on those. It picks a very pretty small subset of the blue. It's just getting these colors here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to bump the saturation a bit. And it's really doing a good job of just affecting these blue so I'll just I'll pump it to the top, um, you know, so you get an idea. I'm getting a bit, I'm getting a bit over here of uh, picking up some more blue. That's probably just from, you know, that's obviously just from uh, the sun or not the sun, but some of the um, natural light there. So um, you know, you got to be a little bit careful. But it works pretty good. It's not getting anything in the skin tone. Um, and I got a nice bump in color there. So I can add another one here. So I'm going to do some of this red here. This is where it's going to get a little trickier when you're in the reds because obviously you got to avoid, um, you know, if I go up here, it's going to affect your skin pretty crazy. 
Um, so I'm just going to give it just a, you know, I'm not even going to screw with that one because it's going to do too much on the uh, skin. What I would do is actually this is a perfect time um, to bring out the um, local adjustments tool because you can do color adjustments on just an area that you've brushed in. So I could just brush in this area here, brush in this area here, and keep it out of my subject so I don't get any in the skin. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, the skin tone color editor is another great tool. So you're gonna click on a skin tone. Um, as a general rule, people wanna look, have brighter skin. Uh, they want their skin to look lighter. And whether they're, whether they're African-American, whether they're Caucasian, whatever. Everyone kinda likes looking at themselves. They like seeing a little bit brighter skin, um, brighter and tanner. Um, so a nice thing to do is just bump up the lightness a little bit. Um, I, I'll i make this, so I bumped up the lightness here. You can see it's making her skin a little brighter. You know, I can bring it down and you, so you can get an idea. Um, what I like to do is actually make a preset. So in the color editor, you can save presets. You can make presets that are just for a specific, uh, for a specific tool tab. This is, this is where you click on the little option or the little drop down thing, manage and apply presets. You can save a user preset. Um, as you can see, I've got one here, blue sky pop. It's, um, I use it on landscape images. So you can make a preset just for different skin colors, um, which is really cool because it can quickly, you know, you can quickly show a nice skin boost. Um, so that's a little bit about the color editor. Um, um, all right, so I guess a couple other things I'll show. Um, the crop tool is another good one because um, it's a little different than you see in uh, like Lightroom. Works a little bit differently. Um, you use the C key, brings you to the crop tool. Um, it's nice. C is for crop. <laughs> Pretty obvious. Um, the way the crop tool works, you're going to have to go into your crop menu here. Uh, I have ratios set up for different things. So I have four by six so that I can have a the same type of ratio as my original image. Um, just exit out of there, okay. Uh, so once I have this crop set up in a four by six ratio, I'm gonna be able to drag and drop, drag into a way that it makes my, um, the same box as my original ratio. This image, uh, I actually kind of like, this might be a nice crop for this. Um, one of the things that took me a little while to realize about <laughs> how to get out of the, you know, finalize the crop, not like hitting under or something. The way it works, as soon as you go back into the select tool, so hit V, then your crop's there. It's nice because in your thumbnail, it still shows the original, because of course it's non-destructive ed editing, so it's not going to make this crop until you export it anyways. So. All right, so uh, let's say I want to process this image, um, you know, export it and uh, have a have a file to uh, to print, send to my print lab. So you got to have your process recipes, process recipe, and process summary. Those get, have got to be there for your for everything to actually process. Another important thing is the batch tool has to be here. If you don't have this tool tab, it won't let you process images. It's a weird bug, but I don't know. Um, so I've got some recipes here. I've got a recipe for prints. Anything that's selected is going to get created. It's going to get output. Um, so it's really important that you only select the ones that you want to have output. Um, 